<laughs> okay. Well, before we go on, I would like to introduce someone who is the executive director of the Sustainability Institute, and he is uh, someone who has made it possible for us to hold this event here tonight. And the Sustainability Institute does incredible work. I, what I've said about them for many years is that the Sustainability Institute and the predecessor Neighborhood Network has done work on Long Island that we would all be really sorry if it didn't take place, and yet you may not know that it's happening. So on that note, I want you to uh, thank and welcome Neil Lewis, the Executive Director of the Sustainability Institute. Thank you, thank you Bob. Um, you know, he thanks us so much, and he's so, uh, so uh, uh, gracious in responding to the opportunity we have in terms of providing the facility. But, you know, other than taking care of a um, security guard, that's it. It's really nothing for us. So we, we love having this uh, event here, and frankly, um, when you guys meet, uh, volunteers get together with Bob and talk about uh, uh, what you liked and what you didn't like, and look ahead to next year, you should talk about, let's make this an annual tradition that we have the annual um, uh, Healthy Planet Festival Day. Uh, so I think that would be great. Um, so we work on environmental policy issues, and we do uh, a lot of planning work, and um, one of the projects we're working on is called Cleaner, Greener Communities, and the premise is to um, uh, work with the state, uh, there's a state office for uh, uh, environmental and energy research, and we're working with NYSERDA to come up with this plan for Long Island. And they, they keep telling us they want us to be innovative and be creative, it can't just be a project that says, you know, um, let's build more solar panels, because that's kind of obvious. Um, so we're looking at ways that we can reduce our environmental uh, footprint, particularly our impact on global warming. And um, they also say in the guidelines we should look for ideas that have sort of multiple benefits, not something that just does the one thing of uh, replacing uh, the use of uh, energy, one type of energy for another. But, you know, that's great, but can we come up with ideas that have sort of multiple benefits? So we keep trying to think what would be sort of good ideas of things that would reduce our carbon footprint and might also accrue other benefits throughout society. Uh, maybe have health benefits or uh, reducing environmental wastes or uh, having other um, benefits from a social point of view or ethical point of view. Um, so we have to think of these ideas and we're really sort of challenged and um, doing our best and uh, we're hoping that maybe they're, you know, one of the issues for example is we spend about $25 million a year from LIPA on solar and then homeowners who buy solar, they invest in it. So it's kind of still unfortunately a little expensive, it's still a great deal to do, but it's hard to envision that we're going to multiply that by 10 or multiply that by 50. And that's what we need, is some ideas that we can really get a tremendous, tremendous bounce from. So I need some help. If you guys can give me some ideas to help with this project, um, it needs to be something that is maybe really obvious and sitting right in front of us and we've just been missing it all along. So, uh, where's Bob? Bob's part of this uh, project also, so maybe he can help us identify one of those kind of clever ideas that for some reason no one's come up with yet. That's it. Good luck. Thank you, Neil. And I uh, will do a few more thank yous while I happen to be standing in this spot. And uh, <laughs> how did I get here? This is, uh, I'll thank the people who donated to the events. One is Seven Angelica Farms, again for the soup. Rich and Patty, thank you so much for all you do. And Jennifer Grace and Eric Eaton for the music. Yeah. And of course, Edgar Mills for the music. Woo. The water well from Huntington. Greener country, environmentally preferable products. And by the way, he is the one who provided the plates that you ate with if you did not bring your own. They are recycled. And what else can you say about those plates? Compostable. Compostable. Okay. Recycled. Compostable. And thank you to Whole Foods Market for donating the materials for that wonderful soup. 
house of doses for some of the food that we all ate from, the pakoras and the, what kind of rice was that? Curry rice. And they're in Hicksville, house of doses, and to all the volunteers. And of course, to uh, Lewis Oliver Farm for joining us today as well. Now I have mentioned the raffle prizes, and I will quickly run down. We have a new one from, uh, they are beads from Bettina Barbier, glass beads, and they're beautiful, and you can see them back at the table at the, uh, at the appropriate moments. After the speaker is done, you'll have a few minutes to look at the raffle prizes again and to purchase prizes. And we have a $125 certificate from Pure Food and Wine, a $75 certificate from Candle 79 in New York City. We have a bas gift basket and book, cookbook from the Green Thumb CSA in Huntington, which is vegetables that you get on a weekly basis, grown locally, organic, which is the best kind of vegetable to eat. And of course, the Cinema Arts Center, several sets of tickets. Zora Nimadi, a 30-minute infrared sauna. Moose Shoes in New York City for plant-based, non-animal-based shoes and accessories. And I believe that's it. All right, thanks for coming tonight. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I want to welcome you to Healthy Planet's dinner lecture series. Now, we've been doing this a very long time. We started this in 1990, and uh, it was under a name of a different organization. And uh, this particular event has been going since 1994. And it is one of Long Island's largest Thanksgiving celebrations. And as you may have noticed, there's something that makes it very, very different. Hmm. Yeah, that it's Thanksgiving, which is entirely associated with having a turkey, without the turkey. And we do this for many reasons. First, let me talk about climate change just for a moment. Now, climate change is a hot issue these days. If you're... <laughs> sorry. If you're on one side of the issue, you think it's a conspiracy theory and something put together by people who are trying to get money from selling climate credits or uh, carbon credits. If you're on the other side, you think it's a threat to the world that could have serious ramifications both to life and our economy over decades to come. And it's very interesting that this is a scientific issue that's being debated by people who have no idea what it even means. I, I speak to many people who, they'll say, oh, it's not real, it's, how can we even put money toward this? And I say, do you know what climate change is? And they say, yes. And I say, well, tell me what it is. And they don't know what it is. So, that's not to take away anything from the people who are saying that they have a particular belief. We all have our beliefs and we need to speak out in favor of them. Um, I, I take more of an issue with the people who are putting forth those false beliefs and that, uh, that really are, have the intention of misleading people. And the way I look at climate change and the way people don't necessarily see it is like this. Picture, you have a loved one. A mother, father, sister, brother, child, daughter, son. And that uh, loved one uh, is away at school one day or they're away at some place. And you, so you get a call and you say, I have them and I have a gun to their head. Within 24 hours, I am going to shoot them unless you pay me $100. $100. Okay, so not a lot of money, right? So basically, you have 24 hours to figure out, is this person real? Do they exist? A, do they have a weapon? B, do they have ammunition? C, do they have a history of doing this kind of thing? D, and so you check around with all the best experts in the world, and these experts are meeting and they're talking amongst one another, and they find out, yes, this person certainly does have a history of this kind of thing. And so if they have a gun, watch out. And then you find that they've purchased an enormous amount of ammunition. They have yet the ammunition. And they've recently purchased a number of guns. They have a gun. And so you know that their psychological profile from the people with the best minds in the world are that they would do this kind of thing. They cannot be trusted around guns and people for whatever reason. And then someone says, you know, I just don't believe it. Something about it 
Someone's making money off of this thing. What do you do? Say, hmm, all the best experts said that it's happening and that it's really dangerous. Should I put the hundred bucks out? But this guy said, maybe it's not true. All right, what do you do? Okay, now is there anybody who doesn't pay up? Anybody? No. All right, that's the point. Except we're dealing with something that's a lot more threatening to our world, our environment, and our economy than the loss of one person, which is tragic. We're talking about the loss of many people. And so here we are in a world where it's still being quote unquote debated, which is why we see it as such a marvelous, and for me, an exciting opportunity to have someone of this caliber who not only speaks about the issue, but knows the issue from the inside out. He's one of the people that people listen to to find out not just what's going on on the surface, but what has happened with the science over decades. What did they used to think? What, what came of that? What are they thinking now? Everything that you could want to know about this issue. So I'm really pleased to have uh, our speaker with us tonight to speak about that. Going back to the food issue, we have it this kind of Thanksgiving for a very specific reason. And that is that eating this kind of diet, unlike eating the standard traditional Thanksgiving diet or the standard American diet in general, this type of diet creates the world that we all want to create. And I include you in that. Whether you're a vegetarian, a vegan, a diet in the wool meat eater who will never ever give it up, we all want the same thing. We want a clean world. We want a kind world. We want a world where future generations are going to have the same opportunity to breathe clean air, drink the water, and live in a place that is as accepting and as bountiful as the world that we have today. We are so blessed to have what we have. And so, in order to, to further this, we are taking it upon ourselves. We're waiting for the policymakers to take action. Yes, we all do that. And we're urging them to take action. But we're not just waiting, say, I sure hope they do something. We're building up the groundswell of people acting in a way that creates what it is that we all want to create, what we all want to create, regardless of what we like to eat for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And that is, by doing this, we are creating that world. It's a very powerful way of creating that, that world. You know, every single hour of every single day, we're killing a, a million animals in the, in the United States to create the food for us. We love our cats and our dogs. We marvel at the birds in our yard and the squirrels running around and we think it's also in the deer and, and yet we are just killing animals you know, wholesale and, and with very little awareness of the fact. Why? Because our society has handed this on to us. It's like an abused child handing that on to their children. It's not intentional, but it's just the way it's always been. We're creating a new way to be. And that is a, a very powerful way. How powerful is it? Well, the United Nations Food and Agriculture Organization has made this statement. They said that the livestock sector emerges as one of the top two or three most significant contributors to the most serious environmental problems at every scale from local to global. <laughs> the findings of this report, which is livestock's long shadow, suggest that it should be a major policy focus when dealing with problems of land degradation, climate change and air pollution, water shortage, water pollution, and loss of biodiversity. It is big. Eating lower on the food chain, as far as I see it, is one of the most immediate